Uh, today I'm going to be talking about connecting the digital and the physical. And um, I call this the key to getting anything done these days. I also could call this what I learned from a typo, a flower, and a revolution. First, let me show you the typo. This was the typo. I went to speak at a conference, and they printed out, you know, instead of tent cards, these really nice plastic cards. But I think they meant to say Sri Srinivasan of Columbia University. <laughs> instead, it ended up like this. So I took this and put it on my door, and it said there, I said, anytime anyone, most people didn't notice because my name's so long and complicated, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't even notice. But a few people did, and they made jokes saying, what, were you in Russia recently? And things like that. I actually uh, went to kindergarten in Moscow, so that might have been uh, part of that. So I will come back to this typo, but I just wanted to give you uh, a, head, uh, a head start at looking at that. Wanted to give you all my contact information because I think it's really important when you have an opportunity to, uh, to listen to someone, you want to, fa you want to ask them questions afterward, you want to follow up, or as, I, as bloggers like to do, you know, fact check their ass. Uh, so <laughs> if you want to do that and you want to contact me after, please do, and you have my contact information. I also want to give you my social media guide is listed on there. It's a bit.ly link, bit.ly slash 3 and you'll find this entire uh, slide presentation on that as well, or you could even find it there now. I also created this idea of uh, taking this idea of kind of the physical and the digital as much as possible. I created cards that are business card size, cards that uh, are my social media guide. And you can go to that link, again, bit.ly slash 3 and kind of make your own if you like. It's kind of like arts and crafts, and they come in this size. If you see me, I can give you one also later. This is the flower I mentioned. Anyone know what flower this is? Room full of educators. Somebody must know. <laughs> Apple blossom, I'm hearing. What else? Jasmine. We'll come back to that. Here's the dirty secret of social media, everybody. Almost everyone will miss almost everything you do on social media. <laughs> And as a guy who talks a lot about social media, people are always trying to find reasons to tell me why social media is terrible. And so I went out in front and started saying this. And when I started saying this, then people said, then why are, you, why are we listening to you if social media is a waste of time? The fact is that you, most people will miss what you do, but it's also true that most people will miss almost everything you do in any medium. Think about this. I'm on, um, I've been on local TV for about 10, 12 years in the mornings, and almost everyone I know doesn't watch me. <laughs> People in my building don't watch me. People in my own apartment don't watch me. <laughs> and the reason for that is there's so much going on, right? And it's, so it's not that social media is any worse or better than the other, uh, other formats. It's just that it's because we are being exposed so much to social media and people are talking so much about it that we think we should know that it can use it uh, better. But the good news about social media is that it can help amplify and get attention to what you care about better than any medium before it. And that's why it's important. Here is the virtual uh, version of that physical sign I had. So I was trying to do something with this, and then one day it occurred to me that this looks like this guy. This is the only time I can ever feel like it, I feel like in the same planet as uh, the great Nick Kristoff is to have that off at the end of my name. <laughs> and um, I tweeted something about someone's birthday or some, something I, I posted, and Nick, in some other context, said, oh, we share the same birthday, some, uh, someone else and him. So I noticed that, and that led to this idea that maybe we could do something for his birthday to kind of salute the kind of work he's doing. If you're not familiar with Nick Kristoff, he's a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner who travels the world telling stories that haven't been covered by mainstream journalists, mostly. So I did this. Most of you still see my name so long you didn't even notice the OF at the end. <laughs> and I said, well, let's see if we can get more people to do this. So. His birthday was yesterday. You can still do this tonight. You can still do this today if you want. His birthday was yesterday, and we got thousands of people around the world to do this tribute. And this is a word cloud of 
those names. I love uh, seeing names like, uh, you, can, you can go on there, Columbia Journalism Off, or you, you can see Loon Off, or um, Bold Off. Uh, I was hoping that one of my friends whose last name was Yulanoff would do Yulanoff Off, and that would be fun. You can, you can see some of the names on there, Dwyer Off, et cetera. Uh, there were some fun moments. Here's somebody writing to someone else who did this in India. Uh, Sachin, what's with your name? Just returned from Russia? And he says, no, this is a tribute to Nick Kristof. So the point was that I was hoping that people would do this and they would wonder who this guy Nick Kristof is if they didn't know him, and they might learn about something about the causes that he supports and the kinds of coverage he does. People really got into the physical and the virtual. And so what you're seeing here is someone taking uh, a, uh, a card and writing out her name in this new format, E.F. Stewart, and she became E.F. Stewart off, and then of course she tweeted and Facebooked that, so uh, it's all very meta. There was also this, a dog <laughs> named Alice, who became Alice off for Nick. Nick responded to uh, this, and he said, uh, it's better than any award, and people talked about that. Of course, the Half the Sky Foundation, which he Created, they loved it, of course, and it helped uh, get attention to them. And we talked about Amnesty Care, at, at Amnesty at Care, and also at Half, which is their uh, their Twitter handle. And we hope you'll follow them. And here's Amnesty responding. One of the things I tell people about social media is you should always be listening, not just broadcasting. And so here's Amnesty hearing that this is going on, and they're tweeting this back out, and that's nice. But not everybody liked it. Someone said, seriously, what self-respecting J school professor would come up with this fanboy crap? <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not familiar with this expression, sort it out, but it must be some kind of insult if someone says, sort it out, Sri. I'm not sure what exactly what that means. So uh, sometimes it's helpful to know what you're being uh, told to do. The other <laughs> The other, the other thing was, this was the nicest thing this account said about this whole project. The only thing that I could reproduce in front of all of you. So if you want to have some fun, go back and see everything that they said about me in this process. I'm going to switch gears here now and show you another person on social media, on Twitter, um, Malcolm Gladwell. How many Malcolm Gladwell fans here? I'm a huge Malcolm Gladwell fan. I'm not sure which of these is the real Malcolm Gladwell on Twitter. Right? There's Ma at Malk Gladwell, it's kind of fun. And then there's at Gladwell. And you can see they have a lot of followers, but not a lot of tweets, and not a lot of listeners, or not a lot of followees, as you can see there. And so this person, who is a wonderful journalist, and I'm a big fan, I think he's one of the most important writers of our time, most important explainers of our time, like Nick is, uh, he decided to do something uh, about social media. And some of you might remember this article in October, November of 2010. And he said, basically, social media can do no good. That's what uh, his premise was. And uh, he was saying that you know, it can't have any impact. It's not, it's not important. And the reason he said all this was because he wasn't on social media. Right? You can't have had, let's just go back there and see, you know, either it's either 22 tweets or 10 tweets, if these were even his, uh, we don't know. Uh, and then uh, go and write long articles about, uh, about uh, um, something as important as social media. So, but he did, and it was beautifully written, and it was wonderful and uh, so readable for a lot of people. And everybody I know who hates social media sent it to me and said, <laughs> there you go. They should have said, sort it out, Sri. Malcolm Gladwell has just... <laughs> kick your what you know what. But he was also spectacularly wrong. And this is the graphic that proves he was spectacularly wrong. Some of you remember this. This was, as you know, January 25th was the day uh, that the Egyptian revolution started. And that was two days later, the Egyptian government shut down the internet. And uh, someone had a great tweet, uh, Scott Klein, who's Klein Matic, K-L-E-I-N Matic. He had this great tweet, Egypt shut down the internet because they didn't want Malcolm Gladwell to be wrong. <laughs> that's how much, that's how much Hosni loves Malcolm. Everybody is a Malcolm Gladwell fan, and they should be. But the lesson from this here is that you need to marry the digital and the physical, the virtual and the real life, to have anything happen. We are seeing here 
that uh, the Egyptian government understood that they could be people kind of uh, you know, online doing things and in Tahrir Square. It's that combination that's so dangerous or so important or so good, depending on your point of view. And that's one of the things to be uh, thinking about. Um, what's going on here when you look at this? This is a tweet. It's a US government announcing an evacuation order. Another way to think about this is that this is the helicopter leaving from the rooftop of the embassy in Saigon. Right? That's what this is. Today, if, you're a, if you are traveling overseas and you're an American, the US government will not send you a limo saying, would you like to join us on the evacuation flight? They tweet it out. If you're not there, you're not on that plane, right? Now, that brings us to this flower. Anyone remember what this flower is? Jasmine. And what is the connection? You probably made it already. The Jasmine Revolution was what the revolution in Tunisia was called, or that's what it was dubbed. And uh, it was basically the idea that you could um, use this, this phrasing of the Jasmine Revolution to, con uh, to kind of refer to everything that was going on in not just in um, Tunisia, but also Egypt and elsewhere. But it was started in Tunisia. And what's so interesting about this is it's such an innocent flower, right? But one group or one entity that understood this marriage of the physical and the digital better than anyone else is the government of China. Because what they did was they banned the typing of the words Jasmine into any of their social networks because they didn't want you to type it. But that's not enough because it's that marriage of the digital and the physical that's important. So you know what they did. They said, no more growing of the jasmine plants in certain cities. And they actually actively just pulled out and uh, cut down uh, the, the uh, jasmine. The flower was banned. Because they didn't want someone putting a flower behind their ear, walking around, and giving a signal that, hey, maybe we're partners in this uh, revolution that we might want to start. So the government of, uh, of, uh, of Egypt really understood this. And that's something I would like to kind of have you think about. The, anything you're doing, if you want it to be successful, digital and physical. I want to show you a couple of signs of the times. You're now seeing this marriage of digital and physical. This is a cover of The New Yorker. It's called Waiting. And you see that buffering sign on there. I posted this on my CNET blog. And someone wrote in the comments they were waiting for the picture to load. They didn't realize it was a cover <laughs> of The New Yorker. This is uh, a cover. You remember, for a few minutes, there was Lynn Sanity in New York. Yeah. And uh, this was uh, Sports Illustrated putting hash SI Lynn Sanity on the cover of Sports Illustrated. You're going to start seeing more and more of this. And this is going to be important. The hashtag, I think, is going to be increasingly uh, something that we can use to communicate in schools, in classes, when you're teaching. And the best example I can give you that is, of that is there's a tool called hash tracking, at hash tracking if you're interested. And uh, we did a little conference called Social Media Weekend each January up at Columbia. And we only had 500 attendees, but we had 12,000 tweets and 2,000 contributors. And we had 8.4 million people reached by those 2,000 contributors and 45 million impressions. So this idea of taking what you're having and have it amplified Track, your, track what you're doing on, on, on the hashtags. And I'd be uh, happy to talk to anyone who wants to learn about the service or you, uh, connect you with them because they want to learn and get more people using it. But now I'm going to give you my social media success formula in the last 30 seconds. And we're all going to read it together. Uh, we're going to pretend we're in church led by a Hindu priest. It's an odd thing. <laughs> Sunday church led by a Hindu priest. So everybody, we're going to start with the word helpful. Everyone's going to read it really loud and really strong. Catholic Church on Sunday, led by Hindu priest. Who's ready? OK. <laughs> Helpful. Useful. Informative. I can't hear you. Yes. Sing it, sister. Yes. Say it, brother. Yes. Hallelujah. Generous. Louder. Yes. Amen. <laughs> and that is the social media success formula. That's what I'd like you to think about. Every one of your tweets, your posts, if it's these things, you will get more followers and you will have more success. If there are any lawyers in the room, that word actionable doesn't mean lawsuits. It means <laughs> get people to take action. There's my contact information. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>